Hello everyone, my name is AJ Keefe. I'm going to be presenting on this excellent paper titled Persistent mTORC Signaling in Cell Senescence Results from Defects in Amino Acid and Growth Factor Signaling. I want to thank the authors for this uh, excellent research and providing us with this uh, great insight into the mechanisms of cellular senescence. And for this presentation, I want to recommend that my viewers pause the video at each new slide and read through mat the uh, material and digest the figures before playing my voice. And I hope you enjoy the presentation. This paper focuses on the uh, mTORC signaling pathway as it relates to cellular senescence. So I won't spend much time reviewing senescence, but it's, it's simply the permanent exit from the cell cycle that is, that is marked by widespread uh, rewiring of cell cellular activity. So mTORC, a, a kinase that inhibits autophagy and promotes protein translation, has been repeatedly implicated in both aging and the, the gain of senescence. So before diving into this paper, it's important to review the details of mTORC's, the, the mTORC signaling pathway. So mTORC, again, is a kinase that when activated, it inhibits autophagy and it promotes protein translation, among many other things. But given these two diametric outcomes, mTORC is often said to be lying at the crossroads of anabolic activity by modulating protein translation and catabolic activity by its modulation of autophagy. So then, what factors activate the mTORC kinase? A major factor that is that is going to be re revisited several times in this paper is this mitogenic uh, growth factor signaling through AKT. In this figure, it was protein kinase B, also called AKT. So the presence of phosphorylated and thus active AKT, which we're going to see in this paper, it is, is what is a mechanism by which growth factors leads to the activation of mTORC signaling through uh, these series of, of double negatives, basically. So briefly, AKT uh, phosphorylates and inhibits TSC12, and this prevents TSC12 from inhibiting REB, the principal activator of mTORC. Thus, when, when TSC12 is inhibited by AKT, REB is now free to activate uh, mTORC right through here. This is mTORC. So if the double negatives are straining your brain at this point, simply remember that activated phosphorylated AKT means mTORC will be activated. So where there is growth signaling, there is mTORC signaling. And so before getting into what mTORC signaling actually does, it's also important for the, for the understanding of this paper that we understand that uh, free amino acids are also capable of activating mTORC. Uh, so amino acids, like growth factor signaling through AKT, activates a series of events that ultimately leads to mTORC activation. So briefly, amino acids bind and inhibit uh, castor and cestrin, which would normally, um, which would normally inhibit Gator2. So Gator2 when, when Gator 2 is free from castor and cestrin inhibition, it inhibits Gator 1, leading to the activation of RAG AB, which activates mTORC. So I don't, I don't know if the details are too, too important for this paper, but simply remember that amino acid signaling through proteins like cestrin and Gator uh, ultimately leads to the activation of mTORC signaling. So we, we have these two primary signaling pathways that activate mTORC. Those are the, the AKT, from the growth signaling and amino acids down here, which doesn't go into the details, but uh, basically what, what's happening is that we have AKT and amino acids, they both activate mTORC. So the question is, what does mTORC actually do once it's finally activated? And for the purposes of this paper, we need to know three primary kinase targets. mTORC principally activates translation by directly phosphorylating and inhibiting for EBP that would otherwise uh, prevent ribosome recognition of capped mRNA. So you see uh, mTORC is inhibiting an inhibitor of protein synthesis. So it's thus activating it. So in other words, mTORC inhibition of a translation inhibitor activates translation. 
So mTORC also indirectly through this S6K intermediate kinase leads to the phosphorylation and activation of the ribosomal subunit S6. So phosphorylated S6 or PS6, it, which is phosphorylated S6, will subsequently in this paper be used as a proxy of mTORC activity. So when you see PS6, you should recognize that it, that is essentially a measurement um, of mTOR kinase activity. So our, our third primary target of mTOR is OLC1 over here. In the graphic, it was called ATG1, but um, in mammalian cells, it's it's OLC1. And OLC1 is the autophagic pre-initiation complex that is potently inhibited by mTOR kinase activity. So autophagy is inhibited by mTORC. So to summarize, mTORC activates translation by activating S6K leading to the phosphorylation of S6P. Um, it also inhibits 4EBP, the inhibitor of pro protein translation. And we also have an inhibition of autophagy by the phosphorylation and inhibition of ulk one Our two main ideas are senescence and mTORC signaling. So remember, senescence is simply the irreversible exit from the cell cycle, and it's associated with aging, and it's marked by extensive genetic and epigenetic rewiring that ultimately leads to um, uh, profound alterations in cellular activity. Um, also, additionally, the, the clearance and the selective removal of senescent cells has been shown to prolong an organism's lifespan. So that's something to keep in the back of your mind as we're going through this paper, that, that the selective removal of senescent cells is, is good for an organism's lifespan. So exactly how this process affects mTORC signaling is not well understood at all. So a better understanding of how mTORC signaling differs between senescent cells and normal cells may provide a mechanism of perhaps selective uh, removal of these replication deficient cells and prolong an, an organism's lifespan. So the central question of this paper is how is mTORC deregulated? What signaling pathways are unique and contribute to this deregulation in senescent cells? And what happens when mTORC is altered or, or even corrected? How do senescent cells respond? So this is what the authors discover. These are, these are the results. Uh, senescent cells show constitutively active mTORC signaling that is unresponsive to amino acid deprivation, something that in control cells uh, would, would cause mTORC to shut off. So normally amino acid starvation causes mTORC to shut off, but that is not seen in senescent cells. Uh, defects in primary cilia formation caused by the IFT88 mutation produces a similar phenotype to constitutive mTORC signaling that does not respond to amino acids. So this is interesting, but it caused the authors to wonder if defective cilia and senescence are somehow related. And since they both appear to share the, the characteristic of, of constantly active mTORC signaling, they, they decided to look into it. What they found is that primary cilia in senescent cells fails to elongate following amino acid starvation, a process that normally occurs in response to starvation. The researchers next sought to identify potential mechanisms to explain this defect in primary cilia elongation and, and to see if it was underlying the persistent mTORC signaling. So they found that restoring or the restoration of membrane potential, a process that goes wrong in senescent cells, actually partially restored primary cilia elongation following starvation. Additionally, restoring primary cilia elongation by, by restoring membrane potential also led to the attenuation of mTORC signaling. So in other words, fixing cilia elongation in senescent cells also partially fixed mTORC signaling by making it respond to amino acids as it normally does in control cells. Thus, this, there's a paradox, however, there's, you know, there's kind of a plot twist because correcting mTORC signaling in senescent cells actually ended up causing cell death. Thus, persistent mTORC signaling in senescent cells is actually cytoprotective. So the, the, the primary finding in this paper can be summarized as this. 
upregulated mTOR signaling is caused by altered membrane potential that disrupts primary cilia. And this process ultimately promotes survival. However, remember that previous studies had discovered that the clearance of senescent cells prolongs lifespan. So perhaps inhibiting mTOR in order to selectively destroy senescent cells is beneficial for an organism. Indeed, copious research has identified rapamycin, an inhibitor of mTOR, to be a validated pharmacological intervention to prolong lifespan. And this paper attempts to understand how an inhibitor of mTOR could be prolonging lifespan. And the theory is that by inhibiting the mTORC pathway, it selectively causes the cell death of senescent cells, and that is how mTORC inhibition prolongs lifespan. To begin their probing of the mTORC signaling pathway, the researchers needed to first establish a senescent cell line. This was done in two different ways. So they, their primary human fibroblasts were either uh, exposed to gamma radiation, which is what's happening in, in uh, panel A, where they were transduced with uh, BRAF, an, an oncogene that paradoxically causes cellular senescence. So these are both standard and validated mechanisms of inducing cellular senescence. So after establishing these senescent cells, they were then starved of amino acids. We can see the two treatments the, the single treatment is either amino acids that were present or not present. And then after, then, then they, they analyzed various uh, signaling molecules involved in the mTORC signaling pathway by Western blot to determine what's going on with the mTORC signaling pathway. So let's, let's begin with the top row of the figures. Remember that the principal result of mTORC signaling is phosphorylated S6. And we can see that in control cells following starvation, the amount of phosphorylated S6 is around 10% what it was before amino acid deprivation. So the amount of phosphorylated S6, a proxy for mTORC, basically drops down to nearly zero during starvation, indicating mTORC is pract practically completely shut off. However, in senescent cells induced by either uh, radiation or by uh, BRAF, the amount of PS6 is roughly 70 to 80 percent what it was before amino acid deprivation. In other words, the kinase activity of mTORC remains largely active despite amino acid removal, which normally serves as a potent inactivator of mTORC. Another use, useful proxy of mTORC activity is 4-EBP phosphorylation. We discussed that. Um, again, you can see 4-EBP is largely downregulated in control cells that were starved of, of amino acids, but is unresponsive in senescent cells. There's not much of a difference in the senescent cells between the phosphorylated 4-EBP. Thus, the, the abnormally high levels of PS6 and four, uh, phosphorylated 4-EBP in senescent cells starved of amino acids indicates that they are not inactivating mTORC signaling during starvation as they should. So in these Western blots, the researchers also probed uh, autophagic activity. And <clears throat> this is indicated by the, the concentration of LC3B2. It's a marker of autophagosomes. And interestingly, autophagic activity appears to be constitutively upregulated. Or sorry, right here by a lot actually, despite the inhibitory mTORC signaling, which is strange and we're, we're going to get to that later. Um, and this, this last column, P21, P21 is a marker of senescence. So this was done just to confirm that the cells that they thought were senescent were indeed senescent. So we see that in both, both conditions, the, these are senescent cells. So it was confirmed that by the, the presence of P21 that they were senescent. So again, the mTORC signaling is vastly, is, is largely unresponsive in uh, senescent cells because you can see phosphorylated PS6 is, is, is barely responding to the deprivation of amino acids when it should be completely shut off basically in control cells. 
Their next move was to investigate if defects in primary cilia are marked by enhanced mTORC signaling, which is apparently something they had previously uh, confirmed in other research. So that their reasoning was that if, if mTORC signaling is upregulated and persistent in their senescent cells, and mTORC is also upregulated in models of ciliary, uh, cilia dysfunction, then perhaps there's a relationship between the two. Uh, since cilia are known to function as signaling hubs and to respond to starvation by elongating, it is possible that they are also responsible for, for altering mTORC signaling. So to begin, the researchers obtained uh, Chandra sites containing a, a well-studied mutation called IFT88. You can see they're using these IFT88 uh, cilia dysfunctional uh, chondro sites, and it prevents the formation of, of primary cilia. They, th they then asked the question, how does that affect mTORC signaling? And what they, th they found uh, con confirmed their previous research, that is that mTORC is upregulated in cilia deficient IFT88 chondro sites and is moderately unresponsi unresponsive to amino acid deprivation. Uh, specifically, they observed that only modest decreases in phosphorylated S6 and 4-EBP, right here, uh, in response to amino acid starvation. So this indicates that there's maybe a little bit of residual mTORC activity, but for the most part, mTORC activity is, is not as is down-regulated as it should be, because in control cells, they observed zero phosphorylated S6 and nearly no phosphorylated 4-EBP. 4 4EBP. 4 so comparatively, there's there's still a lot of mTORC activity in these IFT88 deficient cells that are being starved. They also observed uh, persistent AKT signaling following the loss of amino acids, again, indicating um, persistent uh, growth factor signaling and mTORC activation when it should normally be shut off because you can see phosphorylated AKT in the control condition uh, during amino acid starvation is, is absent and there's still some residual AKT signaling which is known to activate mTORC. So this is to say that defects in primary cilia are marked by uh, persistent mTORC signaling in, in the the phenotypic similarities between uh, senescent cells and cilia deficient cells may might be a fundamental relationship. So before moving on, I do not want to note that I want to note that phosphorylated PS6 measurement in the IFT88 cells appears to be slightly strange because we see that um, in these non-amino acid starved IFT88 cells, the phosphorylated S6 is, is through the roof. It's nearly double what it is in control cells. And so I, I, I wonder if this poses a problem to interpreting these results because this residual um, mTORC signaling might just be because there's so much phosphorylated S6 to begin with. It, it's, it's almost double what it is in control cells. But nonetheless, it does tell us that um, cilia dysfunction does cause uh, persistent mTORC signaling, and that might be a fundamental relationship to uh, senescence, the senescent cell phenotype. After establishing that defective cilia formation can cause uh, constitutive mTORC signaling, the authors sought to characterize the cilia of senescent cells and to see if the, they behave abnormally. So a common and well-established technique of assaying cilia functionality is to monitor elongation following serum deprivation, an event that normally causes the cilia to elongate. Thus, uh, senescent cells and control cells were serum starved overnight, indicated by FCS. So serum starved overnight, and the cilia length and the number were measured. So the control cells were very sensitive to overnight serum deprivation, increasing the increasing the, the the total length of their cilia by 
you know, almost 500%. This is a huge increase, probably more than 500% of the cells. Um, percent of cells with elongated cilium increased by about five, uh, 50%, while senescent cells were practically oblivious to this cue. There, there's no change in the amount of, of elongated cilia in serum starved overnight cells versus cells that weren't. So these results collectively suggest that uh, senescent cells contain defective cilia, uh, perhaps similar to the IFT88 mutations. Since, uh, since defective cilia mechanics in those IFT88 mutation cells was marked by persistent mTORC signaling as well, it's, it's thus plausible that defective cilia is maybe a common mechanism that results in persistent and unresponsive mTORC signaling. We also see um, that average cilia length increases by almost three times in control cells when they're starved overnight. And again, the senescent cells are oblivious and there's zero change in the average cilia length when starved. Uh, senescent cells and the number of, the number of cells with cilium um, shows a similar pattern, but apparently it's not significant. So we can say there's, there's a trend towards increased number of cells with cilium when starved overnight, but it's not significant. But, you know, collectively this suggests that the cilia are, are largely dysfunctional and not responding to uh, serum deprivation as they, they normally do in control cells. Alterations in resting membrane potential are a well-documented uh, characteristic of senescent cells. So the authors wondered if membrane depolarization could be hindering the, the cilia elongation and, and thus be modulating mTORC signaling. So they first confirmed that the depolarization of the senescent cells membrane is, is happening. And they, they saw that the uh, senescent cells had significantly depolarized membrane. And then they experimentally corrected this depolarization using this uh, penicidyl penicidyl right here. So penicidyl is a, a small molecule that opens up potassium pumps and it functions to restore membrane potential. And, and, and that's what they saw when they treated these senescent cells with uh, penicidyl. So having confirmed the ability of penicidyl to restore potential, they then moved to assay how this affected cilia and also mTORC signaling. So first they absor observed that uh, there's a significant improvement in cilia elongation following starvation in senescent cells exposed to penicidyl. So the average cilia length in, uh, in, 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 in senescent cells exposed to penicidyl was roughly 20% uh, longer. You see there's a significant increase in the cilium length in senescent cells uh, exposed to penicidyl as indicated by the plus, a significant elongation. The effect of uh, penicidyl on mTORC signaling was, was even more profound. So they discovered that penicidyl partially restored mTORC sensitivity to amino acid deprivation, as indicated by the reduction in phosphorylated S6. So in this condition, um, you see amino acids are present. There, there's no amino acids in the, in the black bars. These are cells that have lost their, there have been deprived of amino acids. We see in the uh, penicidyl condition, the far right condition, that the amount of phosphorylated PS6 decreases as it normally should. Remember, amino acid deprivation results in the turning off of mTORC and the reduction in mTORC kinase activity. We see a, a slight reduction in the amount of phosphorylated PS6 when cells are treated with uh, penicidyl. Additionally, the, the restoration of membra membrane potential um, also uh, modulated and uh, reduced the constitutive growth factor signaling through AKT. So we see that um, AKT is persistently active during deprivation of, of amino acids in senescent cells. This is abnormal right here. We show that when membrane potential is restored by penicidyl, that the amount of phosphorylated AKT drops off significantly, despite maintaining um, equal expression in the cells. So this indicates that AKT is downregulated 
And this may be, since AKT is upstream of mTORC, this may be a mechanism by which mTORC is, mTORC signaling is, is being lost and resulting in decreased uh, downstream phosphorylation of mTORC kinase targets. So the authors kind of speculate that the restoration of uh, ciliary function in response to penicidal is responsible for the downregulation and the correction of mTORC signaling. So because they observe that cilium length is restored by penicidal, and they are postulating that this is responsible for correcting the AKT signaling and the mTORC signaling, and ultimately results in the um, the, the correction of of mTORC signaling following amino acid deprivation. Throughout this whole paper, I've been discussing mTORC as if it were a dysfunction that compromises the health of the cell. But is that the case? The researchers decided to see how senescent cells actually respond to the inhibition of mTORC signaling using the inhibitor Torin, also using an AKT inhibitor and penicidal. So penicidal had just been confirmed to restore membrane potential and cilia elongation and downregulate mTORC. And thus, Penicidal can be thought of as an mTORC inhibitor during starvation. And remember, AKT is upstream activator of mTORC, so um, inhibiting it would cause inhibition of mTORC. And TORN is a direct inhibitor that binds directly to uh, mTORC and inhibits it. So as it turns out, the loss of mTORC, either by direct inhibition of, uh, with TORN, uh, indirect upstream inhibition using AKT, or by penicidal, um, this all increases the rates of cell death in starved senescent cells. So all these cells are amino acid deprived. You can see amino acid deprivation alone only induces cell death in maybe 10% of the cells. But inhibiting the mTORC pathway using either of these three mechanisms causes widespread cell death. This suggests that mTORC upregulation is not simply a casual relationship with senescent cell rewiring but it's actually a fundamental characteristic that is required for their survival. Additionally, mTORC inhibition by Torin appeared to be the, appeared to only cause cell death during serum, serum and amino acid deprivation. In other words, the persistence of mTORC signaling during starvation is critical for the survival of senescent cells. So the question is why? Why, does mTORC, why is mTORC so critical for senescent cell survival during starvation? The authors, then administered along with mTORC, the, the mTORC inhibitor, TORN1, they, they also inhibited or administered an inhibitor of autophagy, CQ. When CQ and TORN were both administered together, the senescent cells actually survived. As you can see, TORN, without TORN, cells don't die. With TORN, senescent cells die. With TORN and CQ, CQ being the inhibitor, of autophagy, the cells survive. This indicates that autophagy delivers the death blow to senescent cells that lose their mTORC signaling. Thus, persistent mTORC signaling during senescence is required to prevent autophagic cell death. Furthermore, the current study suggests that cells upregulate their mTORC signaling by membrane depolarization induced loss of cilia signaling. So to put it all together, the cells are experiencing increased autophagy and are at risk of killing themselves by autophagy. So they deregulate their membrane uh, polarization. This causes dysfunctional cilia, which causes dysfunctional mTORC signaling, allowing mTORC to be persistently upregulated. So that's the general theory of this paper. So at this point, it's important to remember that we are talking about senescent cells. And these, these replication deficient cells can be thought of as more of a pest than a, a functional cell to the host organism. Remember that senescent cell clearance is believed to increase an organism's lifespan. And mTORC inhibitors are already well-established enhancers of longevity. And so for the first time, we may finally know why. So in, inhibiting mTORC kills senescent cells, but not healthy cells by autophagic overactivation and, and death by autophagy. Here's the summary I came away with. So we start with membrane depolarization that occurs during 
uh, senescence, and this disrupts the elongation of primary cilia and prevents the cilia from downregulating mTOR during starvation. This persistent mTOR signaling is actually cytoprotective. It's an adaption that prevents autophagic cell death. And pharmacologically inactivating mTOR selectively clears senescent cells while sparing healthy cells. So as wonderful as these findings are, we are ultimately, of course, left with more questions than answers. And here, here's some of the questions that I'm left with. So how are elongated cilia down-regulating mTORC activity? So, I mean, this idea alone that cilia are upstream of mTORC is, is, is something that warrants additional attention. Other question is, is cilia elongation deficiency in senescent cells accompanied by defective ciliary signaling like beta-catenine? So beta-catenine is, is kind of the canonical uh, cilia signaling protein, and it might be a good starting place to, when looking for a connection between cilia and, and mTORC. Does restoring membrane potential really restore mTORC si signaling through the cilia? So I have to wonder because uh, they're trying to draw a connection between membrane potential restoration and restoring mTORC through cilia. But I, I wonder that restoring membrane potential using the penicidal, that, that has to have huge implications and huge effects on a cell. So can we really be sure that mTORC signaling following membrane potential restoration is occurring through cilia and not through maybe some other mechanism? And lastly, is constitutive inhibition of autophagy by persistent mTORC a good or bad thing? In the current study, they found that, at least in senescent cells, that inhibiting autophagy is cytoprotective. But there are many in the scientific community who would find this discovery distasteful because there's a wealth of research, in fact, that suggests the opposite, that upregulating autophagy promotes cell survival. So which is it? It's very likely that the consequence of mTORC inhibition depends entirely on the cell type. And so I, I understand that. And I think the presence of uh, any kind of underlying pathology would also influence this question a lot. And um, anyways, these are my questions. And uh, I just wanna emphasize and thank the authors and the researchers for this, for this uh, wonderful paper and their contribution to this field of research. And uh, thank you for watching.